Hey everyone, my name is Patrick and I'm the training manager here at OneLogin. And today I'm going to show you how to set up Syncplicity single sign-on. So the first thing we're going to do is log in. And then we're going to head up to apps and then add apps. And search for Syncplicity. And select it from the list here. Click on save. And the first thing we're going to do is head to configuration and enter our custom domain. Now mine is my domain, which is one login dash training, but it's a subdomain. So we need to enter syncplicity.com at the end. After we do that, we'll click on save. You should have already set up your custom syncplicity domain. So now head on over to parameters. One thing to be aware of, for those users that already have access to Syncplicity before you've added the Syncplicity app, make sure that the user ID matches up to the email correctly. If it doesn't, you'll need to create another field and match it up. But this is really important. You need to make sure that the email address that the user has for their account and Syncplicity matches up to our email field in one login. Otherwise, your users will not be able to log in with single sign-on. Okay, so what we need to do now is go to SSO. And the first thing I'm going to do on the SSO's page is actually enable assumed sign-in. And this is something that only the account owner can enable. Administrators cannot. And the reason why is because it's a pretty powerful tool. It allows administrators of so super users and the account owner to sign in as the user and then sign into the application as the user. It should really only be used for testing purposes during the initial testing to make sure that the application is working. And, you know, generally what I would do is I would turn it off afterwards. So I'm going to check that box and I'll click save, head back to the SSO tab. And I'm going to copy the SAML 2.0 endpoint. So you can highlight the entire thing and, you know, do command C or you can click copy to clipboard, whatever works. And then uh, next we're going to download the X509 certificate. So if you haven't already downloaded it, click on view details and then click on download. And so now at this point, we'll head on over to Syncplicity. Here we are on the Syncplicity custom domain and single sign-on settings page. And the first thing you can see is the custom domain that we've set up with Syncplicity. That's the first thing we entered in our SAML SSO app connector. Now we need to enable single sign-on. After we enable it, we're going to enter a sign-in page URL, and that's the SAML 2.0 endpoint that we just copied. So paste that in there. If we had a logout URL, you could enter that here. A logout URL is just gonna say, hey, when I log out of Syncplicity, redirect me somewhere. Entity ID is something that is not required by Syncplicity, or for that matter, more importantly, by one login. This is sometimes required by certain IDPs. And the last required field here that we need to fill out is the identity provider certificate. That's the X509 certificate that we just downloaded. So upload that certificate. So let's talk about these last two fields, single sign-on network mask and silent onboarding. So single sign-on network mask is an IP address. IP addresses or an IP address range that you need to be coming from in order to log into Syncplicity. This is just an additional security measure that you can take advantage of if you want. In addition, silent onboarding just allows you to auto activate users and suppress that welcome email. It's a nice provisioning feature if you want to use it. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and click on save. And now that our settings have been saved successfully, I'm going to head back on over to one login and I'm going to test from one of my users. All right, here we are back in one login and this is where we left off on the X509 certificate page. I'm going to click on the back arrow key up here and then I'm going to go to the access tab. And what I'm going to do now is assign this application to a test role. It's a good rule of thumb to assign applications you haven't tested to a test role and then to a test user. So I'm going to assign this to a test role I have, and then I'm gonna click on save. Next, I need to assign this to a test user. So I'm going to go to users, 
all users. And I'm actually gonna use Taro here. So I'll click on Taro as my test user. I'll go to applications and I will check this box for test role. You can see that over to the right hand side, it tells me what applications are in that test role, just simplicity. So now that I've done that, I'll click on save. So I'm going to click on more actions and then assume this user. We're gonna call this testing. Click on assume. And now I need to log into Simplicity. All right, now before we start testing, I wanna mention two quick things. Number one, Remember, you need to make sure that the user ID and the email match. I know I mentioned that earlier, but I can't tell you enough how important that is. Number two, make sure you've logged out of the Simplicity admin account you were just logged into. All right, I've done both of those things. So here we go. I'm gonna click on the Simplicity app as Taro. I'm gonna select continue. And as you can see, we've logged in successfully to Simplicity. At this point, I'm gonna head back to one login. All right, now back in one login, I'm gonna to go to my profile in the upper right-hand corner, and then I'm going to revert to admin. And we're not done yet. We need to go back to our app and our company apps, click on Simplicity, go to the access tab, and we're going to take this off of the test role. We've done our testing, we've made sure it works properly. At this point, we can assign it to a role we'd like to have our users assigned to. So click on save. One last thing, go to the SSO tab and uncheck allow assumed users to sign into this app. And that's all there is to it. We've successfully set up SAML single sign-on for Simplicity in one login. At this point, I want to thank you for watching. Let us know how you liked the video on our YouTube page. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to our support team by going to support.onelogin.com. In addition, please continue to check out our awesome help center for up-to-date information on new features and all you need to know to use OneLogin.